it's like one thing you noticed when they've done the road trips I've done. Um, you talk about diversity in the U.S. And yes, we've got diversity in so many things, but we really have diverse geography as well. Yes. Welcome to the Crossing It Off podcast, where each episode we share the stories of individuals that are living out their bucket slash life goal list. I am your host, Roger Williams, and through hearing our guests' adventures, my goal is that you will find encouragement and empowerment to add and cross items off of your list. This time I'd like to welcome my guest, Stan Weeby. And Stan is a self-described road trip explorer, wandering adventurer, and yarn spinner. Stan, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. I'm excited to talk about this subject. What was the item that you crossed off your list? Uh, Traveling Road 66. Okay. So for those that may not know or may not be familiar with Route 66, can you explain to us what it is, where it is? Uh, Route 66 uh, runs from Chicago down kind of running southwest into Oklahoma and then runs mostly east and west to Santa Monica, California. Um, The route changed several times over the years. Initially, it went to downtown L.A. Mm. uh, after... A couple changes that end up that it was going into Santa Monica Pier in in the L.A. area. There was a lot of things going on at the time about building highways. Some people consider it the first major highway in the U.S. Actually, the first was the Lincoln Highway, which ran from um, Central Park in New York to Lincoln Park in San Francisco. And... The route, that route kind of exists today, but it's most some of it's interstate and some of it right. is U.S. 30 and U.S. 40. And when you get west, it's U.S. 40 and even U.S. 50. So it's a lot of different things. Route 66 doesn't exactly exist today either. Some places yeah. is overlaid exactly by an interstate. Other places, it's still there and it's frontage road to an interstate. And so can you actually travel it or you just see it as you're passing by? Um, it's depending on who you listen to, it's between 75 and 80 percent still travelable. Okay. Some sections are so bad that you don't go there when it's wet and you better have a four wheel drive no matter what the weather is like. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I I don't know. I probably was on 60 percent of it. Okay. I left the 1st of April and uh, Chicago and Illinois and even into Oklahoma, it was still kind of chilly when on certain days. And so it's like, it takes a real, a lot of planning just to decide when to go. So what motivated you to put this on your list? Well, <clears throat> we had done as a family, we had done some road trips and uh, with the family and I really liked driving. I'd always thought about Route 66. Didn't know if I really wanted to do it. But one year, my wife, and she was going to bring two of her grandkids, visit her sister in Anaheim, California, fly out there, and asked me if I wanted to go along. And I said, no, I think I'd rather do something on my own. Mm. And I looked around for something that I could do in a certain amount of time, and someplace she probably didn't want to go. So I wasn't, you know, overlaying a vacation we might take. So I ended up doing the Great River Road. Where's that? On both, it runs on both sides of the Mississippi. Okay. And it's there's no, it never was planned as a, a single road. So every state, it's a, a chunk of it is US 61. U.S. 61 runs someplace on the east side and someplace on the west side. Okay. Of the right. And so there's U.S. highways, state highways, and even some sections of it are county and local highways. Everywhere you went, it was like, you know, well, this is America. 
is America mm-hmm. with, with with all its warts and with all its right. Greek points, things like that. Went through some towns that were just that had been abandoned by the river boats and abandoned by the interstate system. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're dying. I mean, we're just dying. They were ghost, practically ghost towns. And uh, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should even mention some of the names of some of the towns. Get right. very, very nice. But, and other towns were just beautiful. You know, they had, we still had railroad stops and the interstate went through them, things like that. So a lot of farm country, saw a lot of John Deere tractors. <laughs> so uh, had a great time. And uh, I had, made a commitment to be home at a certain time. So I only got 11 days. And again, like I said, this was kind of my first modern day, if you will. Right, road right. Trip. So I didn't spend a lot of time on it. I didn't spend as much time as I would have liked. I did the Minneapolis to Natchez. And then the next summer I did the Lake Itasca to the Twin Cities. I mean, I'd been on most, I'm, I'm, I'm from, I grew up in Minnesota, so I've done most of that section right. before, but I just had to drive that section. Someday, I will fly to New Orleans, drive up to Natchez, <laughs> drive back, drive down the Gulf, drive back to New Orleans and fly home. And I will have been on the whole Great River Road. There you go. So, yeah. So how, did, how did that inspire you to do the Route 66? Well, I, I, I realized just how much I liked solo travel. Mm. And my wife had always said, no, nah, I don't, I sure don't want to do Route 66. I do not like checking in and out of hotels every night. And that's my mode of travel is drive and check into hotels. So she says, if you want to go, you can do it. And we have this budget system where it's our money, your money, and my money. So <laughs> she says, you got to do it with your money. So I said, okay, I figured it out and spent, like I said, 17 days. So that's, but really it's like, I always wanted to do Route 66, but I hadn't really any plan in mind or anything as to how and when, and that trip crystallized it and says, I got to do Route 66. I got to do it. I got to take this one. (laughs) So what kind of tools, since you decided, okay, I'm going to do it and I'm going to cross it off. What kind of tools did you find to use to be able to to do the, the route? I bought about five or six different books. And uh, the most, the the best one was uh, Easy 66, Easy 66 Guide by uh, Jerry McClanahan. And he gives a, it's a spiral bound small book, really. And it gives turn by turn directions and lists a lot of places to stop. Not every place, of course, but lists a lot of good places to stop. Uh, gives you options to take. Okay. And from 1926 to 1937, the route went this way. Right. And in 1937, they changed it and went this way. So it gave you some of the, quite a few of those. You could either take one or the other or backtrack and do another one. And uh, I just kind of picked which, which route I'd take and uh, went that way. And it's like, I just, I'll never forget it and uh went on there actually i crossed off two bucket list items on that trip one okay. was route 66 and the other bucket list was at some point i wanted to write something became kind of clear probably back late the late uh you know 19 or 20 2000 8 9 10 mm-hmm. to write some kind of a blog but I never did it. I made a few feeble attempts, if you will. Mm-hmm. And when I did Route 66, I thought, hey, I need to start a blog. So I signed up for a blog on about March 26th when I was leaving on March 31st. <laughs> so that's how I didn't plan the blog <laughs> very well. And some of those blog, I think you, if you looked at that, those, those posts I did on Route 66, I did a post every day. Uh, plan to rewrite those posts. I've got notes I had posted on Facebook at the time and I've got all the pictures and I've rewritten the cornerstone post, the big post about it. And I've written maybe the first four days. (laughs) (laughs) The rest of it still says to, to be rewritten. You have 13 more to go. Yeah. But then I got into taking other trips and doing other things and, 
I hope to rewrite them someday. While on a trip, what were two things you didn't expect to have have happened? What were some of the things that you planned, but you always can't, you know, for any kind of trip, you can't always plan for everything. Were there unexpected things that happened while you're on your, on your route? Uh, there was one kind of smaller specific thing, I think, was that uh, on my, I made a reservation 100 miles out from Chicago. I did 100 miles the first day. Hmm. So then I looked at it and I says, well, I can get to Troy, Illinois. And uh, there was so much to see that I only, by the near the end of the day, I was only halfway to Troy. Already had a reservation. So I drove to Troy. The next morning I drove back and started out where I had, uh, started out where I had left and spent another night in Troy. <laughs> so that was one thing. And the other thing was, in spite of the fact that having five or six books and reading, reading all of those, I still found a lot of things that I hadn't run across in my research or had forgotten, didn't write down, et cetera. Some were just, just the towns and what the towns looked like now. Uh, the fact that some towns had died when the interstate came right. in and Route 66 bypassed. Other towns found really interesting ways to survive. Mm. And um, it was a little easier in the Midwest, Illinois, and Missouri because the population density is more. Right. Once you hit Oklahoma and all the way across, <clears throat> uh, population density pretty really thins out pretty quickly. Right. So, but, a lot, but very pretty scenery for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like one thing you noticed when they've done the road trips I've done. Um, you talk about diversity in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And yes, we've got diversity in so many things, but we really have diverse geography as well. Yes. I mean, Illinois is definitely the Midwest. It's farm country outside of the big cities. It's Chicago Chicago is not like the rest of Illinois. Nope. Just like the Twin Cities is not like the rest of Minnesota. Missouri other than St. Louis, most of the towns along Route 66 were not were not really big towns. I mean, there's Springfield, Missouri, and a couple other towns in Missouri, but nothing is really too big. There you go. Didn't see the Missouri side. I did stop and see the Gateway, the Gateway Arch right. in St. Louis. Actually, interesting thing, I didn't even know it at the time. That is a national park. Yes. That is the smallest national park, and it's been more, one of the more recent national parks. And they don't have a lot. Maybe they do now, but in 2018, they didn't have a lot of signs to say this is a national park. Right. What was the one thing along the trip that brought you the most joy? Um, I think it was just seeing everything, just seeing how diverse the U.S. is, seeing uh, these museums, these uh, the recovery of some towns and remaking themselves. Mm -hmm to other places being ghost towns, things like that. And I think that was, that was it just being on the road. I mean, I just, it's like being on the road. I read the Jack Kerouac on the road. Right. Um, while I didn't do things like that, use drugs <laughs> all the time on the road, but uh, it's kind of like some of the things he talked about, the freedom of life on the road, things like that. Uh, I was curious if you met people while you were while you were on the route that were also doing the route. Was that a common occurrence or not very much of a of a, of a thing that um, happened? I um, I met several people that stand out, and I talked to a, a few others that mm -hmm. don't necessarily stand out because I didn't spend a lot of time talking to them. Um, I was in uh, was in Meteor Crater in uh, New Mexico. I'm. I'm kind of out of sequence on some of these things. And I talked to a guy there who had rented a Corvette. No, he owned a Corvette. And he had driven from North Carolina to Chicago. And he had left Chicago one day after me. And we met there. We talked for 45 minutes about our trip. He, he and I were close to the same age. He was retired as well. Talked about some of the things we were doing. I was going to come back. He was going to go to uh, Chicago, go to Santa Monica, and then he was going to go up all the way into Oregon and Washington and then drive back to North Carolina. Um, I met a, a woman from France 
uh, right around uh, the midway point. Um, and she was spending three months. Wow. Her kids, she was, I don't know, early 50s probably, and spoke in English, um, accent of some kind. I tell she told me she was from France. I, <laughs> I knew it, it's a European accent, I said. Right. And we talked some about her trip. We met actually at Cadillac Ranch in uh, mm -hmm. Amarillo, Texas, which is a cool place, by the way. <laughs> quirky, but yes. I really like quirky places. Where well. they have Cadillacs that are like... Cadillacs buried in the dirt. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a dozen Cadillacs buried in the dirt. They're vintage Cadillacs. The newest one is probably from the 50s, the, the big, huge fins on them. Mm -hmm. And I encourage people to spray paint. So there's graffiti on graffiti on graffiti. And there's a guy right by the gate as you walk into the field to go there who's selling paint chips. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how, that's what's great about a trip like this is you get people who have figured out a way to make, either make a living or make spending money or something like that. Right. So I, I talked to her. She wanted me to take some pictures of her and this type of thing. So I did that. Also at Cadillac Ranch, I ran into about, oh, a dozen at least uh, bikers. They all were on Harleys. They all had black black leather on. And I asked the one guy, he says, uh, you guys must be having fun on motorcycles. He looked at me and he pointed to the guy next to him. And the guy said, oh, we're not from here. We flew in. We're from uh, Brazil. Oh. And... Uh, they flew to Chicago, rented Harleys. Wow. And they were gonna they were gonna drive to um, Albuquerque and then fly home from there. It's interesting and, to know that it's that well yeah. known of a, I mean, because a lot of people don't remember it now here live in the United States for people to from the countries to know what it is and exist is a pretty cool thing. It was just it was just a, a great trip because yes, I took 17 days. The funny thing was, I talked to people later, and I said, so I took 17 days. Some people says, oh, you took that long to get there? And others says, is that all the time you took? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's Different many, many ways to see Route 66. Yeah. If you drove Route 66 again, what would you do differently? Uh, more research. <laughs> yeah. And of course, since I have been that way before, I try to see some of the things I hadn't seen before that I had missed. There are some things I would definitely see again. And, uh, you know, the gateway arch. Right. And uh, some of the places that are like Cadillac Ranch. I like seeing quirky things. <laughs> I did a blog post about what I picked was the quirkiest spot in each of the lower 48 states. And I used a software tool that would get me to all of those places with the least amount of right. miles. And uh, I ended up, I started leaving here, went through Wisconsin, Michigan, and ended up in Texas. So then I had to drive, well, I would have had to drive, I didn't drive that route, but, and nobody probably ever will, but I ended up, would have had to drive back from Texas to get back home again. <laughs> If you met someone that wanted to cross this off their list, how would you finish this sentence? When you cross it off your list, you have to blank. Well, I think I've already mentioned it in that do more planning. Mm -hmm. um, take a look at it. Talk to more people who have done. Try to. There's Route 66 groups on Facebook now that might not have been there when I was doing the planning or I didn't think of. So that's one place. There is much more online research. There's probably a hundred books at least that have been <laughs> written about Route 66. The one thing I would say, well, again, not do differently, but buy that book by Jerry McClanahan. That is the Bible for crossing Route I will, 66. I will put that in the show notes so that people can, can find turn, that easily. Turn by turn directions all the way from Chicago to um, Grant Park, I think it is in Chicago, where it starts out, and it very it's like a mile from Lake Michigan, and uh, get on the road. It's the the street where it started is now one way, so there's two, <laughs> one way going west and the other way coming east, and uh, right for 
just a couple miles from the start, there's this famous restaurant. Uh, it's a breakfast lunch place. It's been there prior to Route 66. Hmm. Somebody at the restaurant told me that um, at one time Route 66 started in front of their restaurant. Wow which I couldn't find any reference to that in the research I did later. But, uh, <laughs> Local lore. Yeah. Lou, Lou Mitchell's is the name of the place. I just nice. thought of it. Lou, Lou Mitchell's. And, what is the next item you're going to cross off your list? Um, well, I think the next item is uh, my bucket list says that I'm going to visit all 50 states again. I've seen all 50 once, but I'm going to visit all 50 states again starting January 1st of 2014. Hmm. As of right now, I'm at 48. And I was on a business trip to Alaska in 2014. So Alaska's done. I've got to see Oregon, which how can you get to how can you get to California, Idaho, and Washington not get to not Oregon? Get to Oregon. <laughs> well, I flew in, all right. I flew into Seattle and changed planes there on my way to Alaska. And my wife and I did a Montana, Idaho, flew to Missoula, and we spent 10 days driving around up there. Oregon is just too far off the beaten path for us yeah. to get there. But I'll get to Oregon pretty easily, but going to Hawaii is a big thing. So oh, sure. you can probably say my bucket list is going to Hawaii, but that's just to finish something that's a part of something else. There you go. Yeah. So besides, besides uh, traveling the U.S., what's uh, something on your bucket list that's completely different than that? Well, I was... Um, I was thinking that um, I probably mentioned it earlier, writing the blog is completely different, mm -hmm. although I've mentioned it. But a couple other things on my bucket list were uh, seeing some, I'm kind of a sports fan, so seeing some uh, iconic stadiums and some places like that. And there was, a, I wanted to see Lambo. I wanted to see a game at Lambo. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see a game at Wrigley, and I wanted to see a game at Fenway. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I crossed them all off at various times. And the highlight of those was the Yankees and the Red Sox at Fenway. It doesn't get any better than that. Mm -hmm. And my wife said, boy, these Boston fans are mean. I says, hey, that's Boston. That's Red Sox and the Yankees. That's the way it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned so, your blog where can listeners find out more about you and the route and your journey and all that where can they find more information and read these uh, well, things you wrote? my blog is called it's a website is called the drive by tourist uh i think i sent you that with mm -hmm. it's the dash drive by dash tourist.com and uh that's brings you to the home page of the blog and then there's uh on the homepage, there's some things to click on to get you to more recent and highlighted posts. And there's also something that says blog, and that takes you to another a mm -hmm. table of contents of mostly everything that's in the blog. Dan, thank you so much for sharing your stories with us today. I greatly appreciate it. I, I love hearing uh, your accounts of how diverse this country is. And, um, and I hope that it inspires some other people to hop in their car and, um, take a look around this country and see all the, the great things. And, and like you said, some of the, some of the things that uh, we need to learn from. So I, I appreciate you sharing this stuff today. Thank you. As a reminder to our listeners in this episode, show notes, you will find links to learn more about this week's guests and information on how you can cross this item off of your list. You can follow my adventures of crossing items off my bucket list on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, new episodes of this podcast are available to stream every Friday morning. We will meet you here next week. And until then, keep living out your life.